Welcome back to the Mishimoto Kitchen. All right, we have our G80 intake parts here that we 3D printed. The goal is to long-term test this stuff on the car. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this in our lab oven for about seven hours. What that's gonna do is it's gonna anneal this plastic. It's gonna make it more durable and it's gonna make it more heat resistant so that it doesn't melt when we actually use it in the car. Okay, we have all of our parts out of the oven from the annealing process. Everything's cooled down. Next, we're gonna sand everything so that it fits together really nice. We'll glue it all together, and then we'll install it in the car for long-term testing. So at this point, we have already finished 3D scanning the engine bay. We designed our intake in SolidWorks, and we have a fully 3D printed prototype in the car. This is the uh, passenger side intake, this is the driver side intake, we already installed. So what's unique about this setup is that this car has a twin turbo and we have two completely different independent intakes. We are even using completely different air fuses. We have already done flow bench testing on both sides of the intakes and from flow bench results, we have decided we are going to replace the passenger side turbo stem but we are not going to replace the driver side turbo snout because there's not a whole lot of room to make this part much bigger to gain flow. Why replacing the one turbo snout? The reason for that is to minimize bend in the intake track so we can maximize flow. So this is the three intake tube we're investigating on the driver side. This is stock intake tube. This is our initial design. So what we find out on the flow bench is that there's more potential flow to be gained by further increasing the diameter of intake tube. This is why we designed a second version of the driver side intake tube. We pretty much use all the available space to us to maximize flow. You cannot really tell from visually, but the cross-sectional profile of version number one is a circle. Version number two, we made it, we flattened it to get more cross-sectional surface area. It's like egg-shaped, right? You look from this side, it's almost this way. So the intake tube is taller. So now we have finished the test fit. We are going to load the vehicle onto the dyno, and the next time you see the vehicle, we will be testing our intake prototypes versus stock intake. So now we have our GATM straight strapped onto our dyno pad. We are going to do some baseline testing on the stock intake and then we are going to switch over to our prototype intake and compare the both. What we have installed on this side of the prototype is a series of intake air temperature sensor and one pressure sensor close to the turbo. We got a pressure sensor and a temp sensor. He's got a thread in here. Luckily BMW gave us a couple of nice little flat spots to do that. The main difference here is we add a secondary inlet source that draws colder air from the bottom of the car. This will give us extra airflow and more colder air. Uh, there's many different types of tests we do. First one is power pull, where we are comparing the power and torque of the Mishi versus Dr. tank. This car run on speed this Vesa, so it is unlikely we will be making power with stock tune. But we are also looking into the intake air tank. Like we talked about before, our intake design integrated extra airflow inlets. So we, we are interested to investigate how that, that is going to affect intake air tank. We will be monitoring uh, things like long-term fuel trim, intake manifold pressure, and various intake air tanks. So we have finished dyno testing of both the stock intake and the Mishimoto intake. 
The intake air temperatures looks good and the manifold pressures look good. As expected, we are making the same amount of horsepower and torque as stock intake. This is because the vehicle utilizes a torque-based ECU tuning strategy and you will not be able to gain performance without tuning. Important thing to keep in mind is that we were able to reduce air restriction by 22.8% and 13% respectively on the two intakes. Once the vehicle is tuned, this will allow you to take advantage of the extra airflow and potentially gain more horsepower and torque.